Montreal. Thanks a lot. <laughs> it's nice to have you in town again. It's been uh, how long now since the band came into, into town? Well, I think it must be probably a couple of years. A couple of years yeah. now. Yeah. I think the last time I saw you was that uh, huge date you did in Toronto with Brand X opening up. All right, the, the Blue Jays place. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, right. that's yeah. it. Are you a baseball fan? No, I know nothing about baseball, but I like cricket. <laughs> oh, you like cricket, and do you? it's all about hitting balls. So, yeah. <laughs> so t Tony, we've uh, we've actually been uh, treated with a new Genesis album quite recently, and as well, we were uh, we were uh, treated as well with your your solo album, Curious right. Feeling, which of course was hugely popular here in Montreal, <laughs> being that Montreal is an incredible uh, an incredible town for Genesis fans. Genesis has, has really, uh, I suppose it was one of the first bands that was originally accepted in, in the progressive mold to put a moniker on the band. And um, uh, music has been going in a lot of different directions. I wanted to ask you two questions along those lines. First of all, how do you feel the, uh, how do you feel the progressive movement uh, or the, the non-new wave music is faring in North America and perhaps in Europe? Well, I obviously don't know much about what happens over here, but I mean, in in Europe, well, I think you're sort of you're you're pigeonholing it too much, really. I mean, I think a lot of the new wave music is is progressive, mm -hmm. you know, um, although a lot of it is obviously aimed um, fairly much at the top thirty and things, because that's you know you have to have a single nowadays to be successful. I think that's the biggest problem, really. I'd like to see more groups being able to break through with just just an album, because obviously, I mean, a, well, a group like us, we we had a lot of albums doing well before we ever had a hit single. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite important. Mm -hmm. What about the new music? Uh, how, do you, how do you feel about it? Have you, have you played around at all with it yourself, getting into, a, into, into some of the sparser sound that's coming out? Well, it's something I admire a lot. It's, it's a difficult, you know, um, well, I'm not sure whether we're so necessarily capable of doing it in that particular kind of way. You know, each person does it best their own way. Yeah. I mean, and certainly, they, you know, you get influences, I think, from some of the things, uh, particularly a group like the police who are very, very good at sort of working with virtually no sound, you know, and it's the space that counts, and that, that, that teaches one a lot, I think. What about the, the two-tone and, and, uh, and that kind of music coming out of the UK right now? Do you listen to much of that? Well, not, you know, not very much. Only what I hear on the radio, really, so I'm only talking about singles in most cases. You know, I haven't heard there's in that particular area isn't sort of one that's particularly struck me yet, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So d what are some of the bands, just I'm sure a lot of people in the audience are curious what some of the bands are that you're listening to these days, or do you have any time to keep up with the current stuff? Well, I listen to to all sorts of things, really. I mean, a lot of stuff I listen to, I don't know whether I'm going to like it until I've listened to it. So if I say I've listened to somebody, like I just listen to XTC today because I've got a cassette player on the road with me, you know, and I'm just, I mean, I'm just trying to find out who, who I do like and who I don't like a bit, you know. Uh -huh. But of the new, newer bands particularly, I mean, I, I, I like the Boomtown Rats a lot. And a lot of the English groups, I mean, I think, you know, like um, The Jam and people like that, I think, are doing a lot of interesting music. Outstanding. But of uh, other listening things, I listen a lot to classical music, I always have done. Oh. And uh, a lot of old favourites, you know, Beatles, Beach Boys, Simon and Garfunkel, you know, I'm still listening to those. The old moldies. I'm afraid so. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great stuff. Yeah. And there's an interesting resurgence happening in that kind of music right now. Is there? Yeah, I've, I, I've seen a lot of that in North America. And uh, there's a resurgence in that, and certainly a great resurgence in the things like The Doors and Hendrix and hmm. Joplin. Well, I always liked Hendrix, yeah. Yeah. What about jazz? Are you into jazz much? Well, not very much, but I'm, I'm very ignorant about it as well, you know. It's not an area of music that's particularly attracted me. I mean, I hear some things I think are quite interesting, and I, I want to listen to a little bit more, actually, but, you know, it's a, que it's a question of time. Mm -hmm. Jazz, jazz very much is, it can be a kind of an improvisational form. Do you, do you get into a lot of improvisation, per, perhaps just personally, as, as you're sitting well, around? Well, yeah, in the, both as a group and individually. I mean, that's what I do, do most of the time, is improvise, and that's how I write, is, is just by improvising, and how the group writes a lot of its stuff as well. We just play for hours on end, and if anyone else heard it, it would sound pretty bad. You know, we don't mind how many bum notes we play. It's just a question of something may evolve if you, if you let yourself sort of just do anything like that. Uh-huh. And we enjoy imp improvising a lot. Uh -huh. So your your band for for this evening, have you uh, perhaps you could run through the lineup other other than Mike and Phil and yourself? Well, we've got um, the same two people as we had last time we played here. Actually, which is Chester Thompson on drums and Daryl and Daryl Sturmer on guitar and, and bass guitar. You use Chester in your uh, in your solo album. Yeah, that's right. What was the reasoning behind that? Was it just a kind of a comfortable feeling, or? Um, well, there was, there was something of that, I suppose, but uh, the main reason was we, we, we obviously played with him on the road a lot, but he'd never recorded with us, and I was very interested, you know, I, I, I like what he does a lot, and I know he plays sympathetically to what I write, and I just thought it'd be a nice idea to use him on the album. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, Misunderstanding seems to be the record that's taken off, or the, shall we say the song that's taken off the most off from Duke. Is there any background you can give us on that song? How it came together? Well, the, the, it's it's an example of there are only there are two songs in this album which Phil's written on his own. It's the first time he's ever written songs on his own, and this is one of the examples. Uh, you know, I think it's a it's a sort of good 
It's a good example of the kind of thing he writes. He can write in a very simple way, I think, very effectively, and it's a nice song. Uh huh. Okay, let's let's give it a let's give it a listen, and we'll come back in just a minutes and talk a bit more. This is Misunderstanding from Genesis on Show Me FM. <laughs> from the latest album Duke and keyboardist extraordinaire of the band Tony Banks is with us this afternoon and uh, Tony we were talking a little bit earlier about your uh, your solo album why did it take so long for a solo album to come out uh, from uh, uh, from yourself well there's just no time I mean I've been working solidly on Genesis really for about the past 12 years you know mm -hmm. and it's just um, Phil had a few personal problems to sort out last in 79 and it just gave the chance for Mike and I to do solo albums. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had about three or four months in which to, to do them, and uh, that was, it was it's something we wanted to do for quite a while, and it was really nice the time came up. Do you have your own studio at your home, or do you work in other studios? It's, it's a very exotic high. term for a r room with a tape recorder in it, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's, it's you know, I didn't do any, any master tracks there at all, but I did do a lot of uh, experimenting with sort of, you know, with possible arrangements and things there. Do you live in town, or do you live out of town? Do you I live out of town. I moved out about uh, a couple of years ago, and I live about sort of 40 miles outside London now. Oh, that's nice. We've just received uh, quite recently this uh, book, Genesis, I Know What I Like, by Armando Gallo. And uh, maybe you could give us a little bit of uh, background on your association with Armando, because I know it's an extremely popular book here in Montreal already. Yeah, well, um, we first met him, I think it must have been, Christ, I suppose, 71 or something like that, when we first played Italy. Mm -hmm. And he was he was a, he was writing for a local um, magazine there, and he was very keen on the, on the music we we were doing there. And we didn't have many champions in those days, and he was one of the few. And he's just stuck with us ever since. We've never been able to get rid of him, really. You know, <laughs> tried many times, but he turns up everywhere. You know, he's been following us around even this tour. He's still with us. You know, in f oh, he's still with you. Oh, yeah, it? you can't get rid of him. Incredible, because in fact, I think it was uh, it was uh, Mike Rutherford who wrote the intro. It said something like that. For many years, we've been trying to get Armando Gallo off our backs. <laughs> yes, right. Well, that's that sums it up, you know. <laughs> Taken lightheartedly, though. Oh I'm yes. Sure. yes. <laughs> well, listen. Um, what else did we want to get into? Uh, we've talked about uh, the book. We've talked about uh, your your impressions of of music in Europe. How much time do you actually get when you're on the road to to to, to, to consider new music and to actually sit down and, and and get involved with each town that you get into and sort of listen to the radio and and get a feel for the city? Do you do you get much of a well, chance? Well, don't get very much chance to do that really. I mean, I listen. I do a lot of driving over over here, so I hear a lot on the, on the, on the radio then. Um, but I don't really get much chance to, to, to do more than that. And that w listening to radio tends to mean listening to um, the AM stations, which is what the car radio picks up. You yeah. know, so I hear sort of the same singles over and over again. Yeah. And I tend to associate tours with various singles. Oh, that's an interesting concept. Mm. Yeah, I imagine so. So when you're old and grey, you'll have a chronology of, of music associated with all of your tours. Well, a bit of, I get a bit muddled as to which <laughs> tour, which one was on, you know, but sometimes you remember these songs that you only hear over here, maybe, you know, because they weren't hits in England. Uh -huh. There's, of course, a huge difference between uh, between the electronic media in the, in England and, and yeah. in North America. Um, you say you, you, you drive a fair amount. Um, mm -hmm. Is this as opposed to flying from day to day? Yeah, I, I don't like flying, so I, I. But I also like driving. I mean, you know, I mean, I wouldn't drive quite as much as I am at the moment if if I if I enjoyed flying more. Put it like that. But you know, you do get some really nice drives. Like as I was saying today, I drove up from Boston to Montreal, and it's a it's a really nice drive. And you you get an idea of the geography of the, of the country as well. And when you're flying over it all the time, you just don't know you don't know what's going on. It's all underneath you. Exactly, and it's a beautiful drive up the mm. seaboard, isn't it? Right. So do you like rent a car in, in whatever town you're in and then drive it up and drop it? Well, off? that's right. But I've had this one in fact since Kansas City because I've been driving since then, which is about <laughs> three weeks ago. You know, I'm sort of 300 miles a day. You know. Yeah. Where are you in the tour right now? Uh, we're coming up towards the end, or about the, well, I say the end, about another week and a half to go. Uh huh. And then is that is that going to be it for a while for North America? Then you'll try to do something in Europe again. Well, in fact, that's it for touring. We we did two two months in England before we came out here. Uh, we did not doing anything else in Europe this year. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to be playing there next year, and we'll be coming back here next year. Um, but you know, we we're, we've decided the rest of this year. Phil wants to make a solo album for a start. Oh, great! And um, during which time, Mike and I will be getting into writing more, uh, both for solo stuff and also for for future group projects. Is it a fairly a fairly much a three-way street in terms of writing for the band? Well, it is now. On on the last album, I think it was virtually even all round. You know, for all of us, um, probably because Mike and I were slightly had slightly less to offer because of uh, the solo albums. You know, and we did a lot more group writing too, which was nice. Um, but I mean, obviously, on earlier albums, you know, it, it, the bias—it's been different. Each album, a different person may dominate a bit. Do you find the the work on the solo album did drain you creatively somewhat? 
Well, no, I mean, I, I came back very fresh, actually, and I mean, I wrote a lot more than was actually ended up on that album, but we, just the way we decided to, um, I'm talking about Duke now, mm -hmm. um, the way we decided to go about it was to try and write as much as possible as a group, and then since each of us had got quite a lot to offer as individuals, we decided just to select two, two by each of us, um, two of the best, you know, and, and work on it like that. Somebody else's dream, a song from your album that, in fact, you just uh, chose to put on. Is there a story that goes along with it? Well, the whole album is, is one story, which is uh, easier understood, I think, if, if by reading the lyrics and sort of, you know. But um, this particular song is sort of like the, the climax of the album, really. Um, and it's sort of a very depressing song. It's a very <laughs> depressing album, actually, but I mean, it's hopefully, hopefully in, a, in a pleasant way. And uh, th this track just tells the, the, the sort of moment when he finally, this, the man who's the hero of the story, if you like, finally goes off the rails. I see. Okay, well, listen, why don't we spin that and we'll come back and chat just a bit more, alrighty? Here's Tony Banks on Shome FM. A curious feeling. Tony Banks of Genesis, and he's going to be back with us in just a moment. Banks of Genesis, and uh, Tony, it's terribly nice to have you back in town again. Right. And uh, we're just basically going to say goodbye now because uh, I know you've got to run down and get a sound check done. And uh, the folks down at Donald K. Donald just called and asked us to let people know that the show will be starting at 9 o'clock. Yeah, right. Apparently you've got some pro troubles with the sound truck or something? Uh, yeah, I think it's taken a bit of time to arrive. <laughs> Tony, what do we have in store this evening? A couple of people have called up and asked on the phone already. Perhaps you could pass Well, we have about, um, we're doing about half an hour from, from Duke. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the stuff is drawn from earlier albums, quite a lot from Trick of the Tail, a bit from you know each of the ones on either side of that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to just be a great Genesis show. That's what we hope. <laughs> Super. Okay, Tony, thank you very, very much for coming in, and we're going to get into a little bit more of music from Duke right now. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye now.